Hey tennis fans, I'm Grace Carter and this is Tennis Now. Well, it was the low blow heard around the world. Before a shot was even struck in the Indian Wells final, the tournament CEO struck a major blow against women's tennis. You gotta wonder what this guy was thinking. Longtime CEO Raymond Moore upstaged the PNB Paribas Open final with some very offensive and very sexist remarks about women's tennis. Moore, who is a former player himself, said the WTA rides on the coattails of the men, and he asserted that if he was a lady player, he would go down on his knees every night and thank God that Roger Federer and Rafa Nadal were born because they have carried this sport. Well, as you can imagine, the women players are outraged. Here's what Serena Williams had to say. I think those remarks are very much mistaken and very, very, very inaccurate. You know, there's only one way to interpret that. Get on your knees, which is offensive as enough, and thank a man, which is not. We as women have come a long way, and um, we shouldn't have to drop to our knees at any point. Moore's comments were incredibly disrespectful and frankly, pretty strange. Think about it interest surrounding Serena Williams' 2015 Grand Slam run was so great that for the first time ever, the U.S. Open women's final sold out before the men's final did. Moore says only Serena Williams and Maria Sharapova are superstars in women's tennis, and then he singled out Garbina Muguruza and Jeannie Bouchard as physically attractive and competitively attractive who can assume the mantle of leadership once Serena decides to stop. Well, as you can imagine, condemnation came very quickly. WTA CEO Steve Simon, the former Indian Wells Tournament director who worked with Moore for many years, called the comments extremely disappointing and alarming. Hall of Famer Billie Jean King says Raymond Moore's words were wrong on many levels. On ESPN's live coverage of the finals, Patrick McEnroe and Brad Gilbert both called for Simon to step down from his post, and former world number one Chris Everett had this to say. After his comments went viral, Moore did issue an apology, saying that he was truly sorry for the remarks, and he apologizes to all the players and the WTA as a whole. So here's the question today, should this guy get to keep his job, especially now that we know what he really thinks? Apology or no, I say he goes. What do you think? Let us know in the comments section below. All right, moving on. Beating Serena Williams is a very tough job, but beating her in a final? Well, that's the biggest challenge in women's tennis, which is why Victoria Azarenka is on cloud nine today. She served well, ran down some amazing shots from Serena, and delivered a stunning straight sets win to collect her second Indian Wells championship. For the second time, Victoria Azarenka is queen of the desert. Vika became the first woman to ever beat Serena in four finals, scoring her first win over the world number one in two and a half years to raise her record to 16 and one this year. And with this win, she is back in the top 10 for the first time since August of 2014. How'd she do it? Well, Vika says improving her serve certainly helped, but the biggie is a renewed belief in herself. I wouldn't go out there if I didn't expect to win. I don't think there's a point to go out there if you don't believe you can win. As for Serena Williams, it was a very frustrating final. So frustrating that she took it out on her racket a couple of times and it cost her a penalty point, something we rarely see happen when the men do smash ups. But even in the loss, Serena hit one of the best shots of the match. such great flexibility. And in a fun moment, Serena showed a sense of humor in her defeat, photo bombing Vika's victory shot. Over on the men's side, Novak Djokovic is the undisputed king of the desert. Nole dismantled Milos Raonic, dropping only two games to make Masters history, tying Rafa Nadal with his record 27th Masters championship. It's Novak's fifth Indian Wells crown, and this makes his third win this year and the 62nd win of his career. 
And all that adds up to an astounding 8,000 point lead in the rankings over world number two, Andy Murray. What a feat. Last year, Novak became the first man to sweep Indian Wells and Miami titles in succession, and he did it three different times. He's going to try to do it again as he plays for his sixth Miami Open title as that tournament launches this week. And about the Miami Open, speculation continues that that tournament may be moving. The IMG-owned tournament lost an appeals court decision to expand its current home at Crandon Park. Organizers had proposed a $50 million renovation that would expand the current stadium and build two new additional stadiums. Well, after that ruling, the tournament's lawyer said a move is inevitable, saying that at some point it's going to be gone. The only question is when. The Miami Open has an eight-year deal with Miami-Dade for use of Crandon Park, but insists it will leave if it can't get the facilities upgraded. Patrick McEnroe told Tennis Now that he believes it's a great event and it should stay in Miami. If it does move, though, McEnroe says the USTA's new $60 million state-of-the-art facility in Lake Nona, outside of Orlando, might be a good place to go. We'll keep you posted. That's the news for now, everybody. I'm Grace Carter. See you next time here on Tennis Now.